that the movie is called We're All Going to the World's Fair. It is now on HBO Max. Uh, it's made and featuring a lot of people you probably haven't heard of. The one name, I, I guess Mayor, uh, Michael J. Rogers, uh, he's been in a lot of different stuff. He was in Mortal Kombat, the TV series. Um, he's also in Hellraiser Health Secret. I kind of vaguely remember him in Hellraiser Health Seeker now that I think about it. Um, even though that was years ago and he did look different. I think I can picture who he is, though. Anyway, the, the one name that caught my eye on this, David Lowry is a producer on this. David Lowry has made some of the most exceptional movies of the last decade, uh, including A Ghost Story. Uh, he made that. He made The Green Knight. Uh, he made Pete's Dragon. David Lowry is one of my favorite directors working today. Yeah. So, and like I said, he's just a producer, but he's so damn good. Uh, the director of this is Jane uh, Schoenbrunn. They're the one who directed uh, and wrote the movie as well. But the, this is a strange movie to summarize. I'm going to do my best here because uh, it's 86 minutes long. Occasionally feels longer, but it premiered at Sundance. And I remember it premiering at Sundance. I think it conflicted with Cha Cha Real Smooth, which is why I didn't watch it. Uh, but I remember seeing the name of it and like being attracted to the title alone. And then that poster that'll be ingrained in your retina after you look at it. But the movie revolves around a lonely teenage girl. Her name is Casey. She's played by Anna Cobb in her first movie role. And the opening of the movie is her doing this World's Fair challenge. One of these internet challenges where you say, I want to go to the World's Fair three times. Correct me if I'm wrong. You say, I want to go to the World's Fair three times. Then you prick your finger repeatedly, and then you smear blood on your computer. Did I hit all the bases? And you watch a seizure-induced yeah, think... flashing light video. That's what it is. You watch, yeah, you watch this blinking. God, this thing needed to come with an epilepsy warning, too. <laughs> like, thank God I don't have seizures, because this thing, like, this thing needs to come. That's just one firm trigger warning I believe in is, like, the flashing light strobe effect thing like they need to advertise that i think even more than they do and it's for this thing especially because this thing gets bad at a couple of times but anyway so yeah she does this internet challenge and the whole movie then essentially follows her this is a girl who has no social interaction not very little social interaction i mean none socially inept she's got to be what 12 13 she's got to be somewhere around that yeah. age and she lives her entire life on her phone or on the computer. And the scary part is, is that especially in the, I don't want to say post COVID because that's nebulous, but in the pandemic era, this, I think this is frighteningly common. Maybe not to the, the, the dramatic extent, but the isolation factor, I think absolutely. But the movie follows her because after you do this World's Fair Challenge, it's common for people to post videos on the internet of like their body changing in very weird ways i don't want to spoil it but there's a there, there's a guy who, and it involves tetris and it's so bizarre and it's so damn bizarre and you're sitting there like i think it was at that point i was like what the fuck did i make these guys watch <laughs> if i didn't know this was this weird i'd have saved it for steve i mean but Anyway, there's only really two actors in the movie. It's Anna Cobb, who plays the lead girl, Casey. And then there's Michael J. Rogers, who plays this internet user named JLB, who messages her and sort of like watches over people who play this game, like watches them through the videos they upload in lieu of taking the World's Fair challenge. That is the plot of this movie. A lot of the movie is sparse. A lot of it is free of dialogue. And a lot of it is... I would say effectively disturbing because this is one of those movies. You don't know where it's going next. You don't know what the next scene is going to bring. And you're almost waiting for jump scares. And a lot of the time they don't come. It's more of a mood movie. It's more of a sparse essence kind of a movie where a lot of it is atmosphere based. A lot of it is based on your ability not to guess where it's going. I was just thinking Jean-Luc Godard to be proud of us and being duped into reviewing this thing. Um, but we're all going to the World's Fair and we're all going to talk about the World's Fair. And I don't even know if I've processed how all that I feel about we're all going to the World's Fair. So I'm throwing it over to somebody smarter than me. Dom, what you got on the movie? I am not a horror person. No. And this, is, this movie is the reason why. I can handle Conjuring. I can handle X. I'm probably going to be able to handle Pearl. I can handle 
you know, all those movies, all those typical, uh, you know, Halloween. I could watch those all day from what I've from what I know. I haven't even seen the original, but I've seen the most recent ones. Uh, the reboot. Evil dies tonight. Or the, yeah, exactly, exactly <laughs> that. Oh God, I, I freaking love that in its own stupid way. But this movie is, it scares me. Uh, it is dis- disturbing. Is the apt word here? It gets under your skin. Literally, there is a scene that comes out of it, someone's skin. Oh my god. And yeah, it's the fear of the unknown. Because even in a movie like The Conjuring, you kind of know. It's like, all right, we're in a hallway. We know what's where they're gonna kind of go next. We have a grounding. You're on YouTube with this thing. This is YouTube. This is a YouTube infinite playlist, and you have no idea what's happening. You ever fall and asleep I can really... with autoplay on and then wake up and go, what the hell did I watch? I don't. That, <laughs> that's what that's this the is. reason why I don't. A hundred percent. That's the reason why I don't. Um, and yeah, dude, this, this is really the kind of movie that after you make, if you're like getting into someone, getting into it with someone about just movies in general, maybe someone you've just met or someone you, you know, you don't know that well. Um, this is the movie after a little bit of rapport, you kind of pull out to see like how deep they go. That's <laughs> like, all right, how how into movies are you? Like, how much can you tolerate really? And that's not even like on an elitist level because I don't even know if you should necessarily like this movie. But it's more like how weird can you get? Yeah, you know. Do you even know this movie like, exists? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Not even exists, but like if you if you told them to watch it and then they came back to you the next day, they'd be like, what the hell? <laughs> it's like. Your friendship might be tested. Exactly, it's it's one you test with, and and honestly, and honestly, Steve, you tested us here a little bit, but I am very glad. I am genuinely very glad that you managed to watch this because Same. it it is so different, and in a way, it's refreshing not just for this year, but in the horror genre. Uh, and I would I would place this in horror. I know a lot of people might. It's less horror and more. Co- I've seen coming of age, which is correct. I would I would place it under horror just because it is. It it taps into the absolute core of the unknown, and I I, I strongly I there's a there, this movie is vague enough where it can go a lot of different directions. I've seen some, and you're I usually don't look up movies. I usually try to form my own opinion before going into the show, and then afterwards I'll do some more deep dive. No, dude, I I I jumped straight into it coming out of this movie uh, at home uh, with Chelsea watching. And and I was so scared of it. I actually so I had we watched it on our TV with the lights on. And I was that first scene. I actually respect it. This that first scene that lasts like ten minutes. It feels like or like the really longest five minutes of your life. Um, I actually brought the wind the browser window because I have a, a computer tower hooked up to my TV. I don't have to. I don't have cable. I actually like pulled the the window aside and like half of my screen was my desktop and just to like give me a sense of safety just like <laughs> blank was my desktop and just to like give me a sense of safety just like <laughs> blanky mode and it's like did i ruin the atmosphere absolutely but again this is the move this movie is the reason more than any of the movies that we've seen this th- thus far or last year and probably even with pearl you know that pearl's gonna feel like a freaking joyride through the 20s or whatever <laughs> compared to this um yeah dude this is the reason why i i get scared and honestly i have delved into it i'm surprised no one's pulled out the word copy pasta yet or youtube like youtube copy pasta i've seen creepy pasta i'm so sorry i'm so sorry i I messed it up it is creepy pasta copy pasta is like a meme thing i've seen creepy creepy pasta pasta thrown around yeah exactly creepy pasta um the back rooms uh (laughs) before it got kind of gamified but the, the actual like core of the back rooms SCP, if you guys know what that is, Secure, Contain, Protect, uh, a lot of that stuff, particularly in their formative years where it was really like unknown, you know, um, the, you, you didn't know if it was real or not. Like, was, yeah. oh, the Majora's really Mask one of that kid drowning or whatever, like that one always. Yeah, so, stuff like that. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know if I know what you're talking you about. People but it's are stuff weird. Like I don't know what the hell you're talking about. You exactly. people are no, weird. You made us watch this movie, man. <laughs> I, I, no, no, no. Steve, I'm I'm glad you brought that up because another reason why this hits so well is because it taps into the intimacy. There are two freaking characters yeah. in this movie. Yeah. There's some there's just some glimpses into and uh, by the way, it's an actual ASMR YouTuber. I actually looked at their channel. It, they got a real ASMR person. Um and some other random people on YouTube and then I think the dad has like two lines out of out of frame. But it is essentially two people here and they're talking 
at first, not even directly, they're talking through YouTube videos. Yeah. Which is the most, which in this day and age is the most back ass word way of doing it, uh, indirect way of doing it. Um, and I, I, I need to go back and look at the details, but a lot of the videos here, I feel like they would have been like view counts in the triple digits at most, if not double digits. And that is like another level where it's like, dude, that fits perfectly because Steve, you mentioned that, um, you know, in the, in the pandemic era, you know, there's so much isolation. Absolutely. But even in my, my, my uh, grade school years, uh, growing up, uh, in the early or, you know, early to mid internet, uh, in the, in the early two thousands, mid two thousands, um, I watched, I did like delve into a lot of that stuff and it was unknown territory. A lot of it wasn't codified yet. A lot of it wasn't really mainstream yet. And yeah, dude, going down rabbit holes of creepy videos, even if they didn't mean to be nowadays, it's a genre, it's a concerted thing. And that's, you know, it's good. Uh, you know, you know, uh, with apex being probably this movie thus far, but um, early on when that stuff was was just on the frontier, dude, those double digit YouTube videos, you didn't even have much to share it with. No comments, maybe one comment. That's probably a spam bot. It was a it's a very intimate experience because it's not a mainstream movie. It's not on TV where, you know, maybe no one recorded it, but maybe thousands of people did watch it. But no, dude, early Internet, that stuff is that stuff is crazy. And this movie at the absolute core of it taps into that so freaking well for me and this is the scariest movie i have seen that we have probably watched together wow indeed i had a lot to say say. i had a lot to say right there so steve i really genuinely i'm glad you made us watch this movie interesting i wonder if joe feels the same way what you got joe so you saw my uh, letterbox review. <laughs> I didn't read it. I just I just glanced at the star rating. Um. All right. Well, I mean, look. I will give credit where credit is due. This director, uh, I don't want to butcher their name. Um. James Jane Sho- Schoenbrunn. Schoenbrunn. Uh, they did a fantastic job with the atmosphere of this movie. Um, and by that I mean. The atmosphere of just being alone, isolated, searching for a connection. Uh, you know, this like little girl, like coming of age, you know, typical stuff you see in coming of age themes of like searching for a connection, trying to find, you know, like, you know, uh, someone out there to talk to, relate to, whatever it may be that we see in these movies typically. Um, she did a great job with that. I mean, her just going through YouTube up late at night, I can't like count how many times as a teenager myself being on justin.tv and being on one of those like instant loop videos over and over again um they have captured that perfectly here uh the other thing is i mean the performance is here too um i haven't run down my phone my bad and <laughs> i forgot to pull that up uh the performance is here from just the two characters and a, alone and a cop and a cop who i think amazing breakout performance uh, very much was entertained by it for majority of this film. I thought, like, you know, any scene she does, looking at the camera and everything, she just does it perfectly, man. Like, you know, she she has this perfect sense of, like, what I, like, just imagine nowadays. I was never really into creepypastas. I had a period where I was. I did, like, a rabbit hole deep dive of it. And just reading YouTube comments, it's like she emulated those YouTube comments of people who are addicted to creepypastas perfectly. Just like, you know, they're just really into it, want to believe, as Don was saying, the mythology behind it, and adding to uh, the mythology on their own. Like, this reminded me, this movie actually reminded me so much, um, this is when I went down the creepypasta hole, but the Slender Man era of it. Um, mm, and every, reminded me a lot of Slender Man. Yeah, there, it reminded me of that a ton, and uh, when you're following Anna Cobb's, like, you know, journey through it, it just reminded me just, like, my own journey through it of like you know looking at other youtube videos and just seeing the creativity that people did uh around that time trying to make you believe slender man is real and the uh, other like you know like imitations of it like you know the the one with the smiling person with the two knives i you know i already forget like their names because they just weren't as iconic as slender man um she 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 pat she to me amazing young actress that i will be looking forward to seeing in the future um and then you have uh is his name is it Theo? michael j rogers My, michael j rogers who 
I mean, <laughs> the, the talk about one of the creepiest performances I've seen this year. Uh, of like, he's got that like. When you hear about these people on the internet, like you know, the, like I, I don't know how to describe them. I really don't. But just people who like are <laughs> night owls of the internet. Like they're up at night on the deepest, darkest sides of the web. Not like you know, like the illegal side, but just like these creepy pasta sides. And they're just this up. dude's posture alone was creepy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the way he just, this dude sat. Way... This dude sat creepy. He breathed creepy. He the, blinked creepy. The way he drank milk was creepy. <laughs> um, you know, like, <laughs> this dude um, the only existed thing, creepily. The only thing that clashed with that is how big his freaking house was. Like, holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> well, I don't even think that was Dude, how is this guy this that, rich? I, I think, uh, dude, in all honesty, I know they never really go into it, but I felt like this was like, I really do feel like he was living still at home with his parents or like with somebody. Maybe oh, okay. That's something. true. That's like, a good point. Like I, I felt that way. Like, you know, he just hasn't like, you know, he is just not sociably actable and just the internet side of like this online role playing game of we're going to the world's fair is like something that obviously sticks with him. And you get little hints of that by looking in his room and you see the drawings he's created. His damn Skype profile pic is the creepiest fucking thing in this movie. Um, I, how did Anna Cobb's character uh, know how to use Skype? That's that's my question. <laughs> I mean, Why does anyone know how to use Skype? Even the video, like he's like, oh, I made a video to contact you with, and the video he uses to do that was like terrifying as hell. Um, the, you know, whatever happened to just DMing people or like commenting or something? This guy had to make like a, you know, like, like, like an I'm gonna kidnap you in five make, days like, a, at home nine inch nails lyric video, like. <laughs> I'm totally interrupting, John. I'm no, stealing no, no, your, ahead, stealing your train of thought, but like, dude, the that's another level of creepy here, which is the inappropriate and exploitative nature of all of this. Yeah. Right? Like, Casey is, what, 12, 13, maybe 15 at most, and this dude is like in his 40s, yeah. at least. 50s. Maybe maybe like and, a rough 50, but like, still. And, and the thing is, though, is that, and I applaud this film for doing it, is that, um, with a young girl like this on this side of the internet, it totally feels believable that this would happen and feels like it's yeah. stuff that is happening. Um, and I, I felt like that, that to me, well, you know, as Don was saying, like, you know, scared of the unknown. Yeah. Like if there's anything, it's just scary because it just feels real. There, like, you know, as Don was saying, I was going to jump in about, you know, I, I was like, you know, I don't want to, you know, interrupt here or anything. Cause I do it all the fucking time too. <laughs> But when he mentioned The Conjuring and stuff like that, for horror movies I love. There is a point, though, and even with the horror film I saw last night, there is a point, though, you get to what the actual threat is, and it kind of, like, you kind of level there. Like, it's still scary, it's still creepy, but you know, okay, the threat in The Conjuring are demons. We're not going to go past that. It's just demons. You know, whether or not you believe demons are real, that, that, is, your, that is where your cap is at. With this movie, it's like, there was always this under lying feeling of tension in my stomach of is something gonna happen is someone gonna kill someone is something creepy gonna happen? are these transformations that she's seeing through other users on this video are these real or is someone actually turning into plastic is someone actually growing demon wings <laughs> like what if what the hell is happening all of that is captured so damn good within this movie and i hate to say it because dom saw not dom steve saw my star rating as much praise as I'm getting it, this movie is just isn't made for me. And it, it, when it comes down to it, it, it was just the pacing. This movie killed it for me, man. The quietness, mm -hmm. the ambiance of it, it, it truly did kill it for me. Um, and I feel like it was the director's vision for it because, like, there are parts of this where it, it works exceedingly well. And there's parts of this where, I mean, I was fighting to stay awake. Um and, and you know, to me, it's the like ASMR. Yeah, yeah, man, that, a, that <laughs> ASMR. I watch ASMR to go to bed, so that part almost sent me to my sleep. Um, I, I it sucks so much because it's like I, you know, I see the awards that this movie got on its poster, and I see the ninety percent that it has on Rotten Tomatoes. It's like I hate to be one of those people. It's just like I, I, it's like everything I see, why it has that, and I completely agree. It's just for me personally. It's I wouldn't be part of that ninety percent if I was an official critic. Um, it's 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 frustrating because it does so many things new and well. Yeah. Or at least in, in a unique but way. It just but didn't if you work can't for get me. that fundamental, yeah. 
it just didn't work. Like I wasn't as invested as this movie as it turned out. Dom was like I was wondering like who was gonna and I, like I didn't see your things, uh, Steve. Um, so I I met, but like from just the opening you had, I knew you liked this movie. It just sucks coming like you know out of this movie when I finished it on HBO Max, just sitting there on my bed. I was just like, damn it, like. I feel like I'm going to be the odd man out here. Because I, I even felt like, I feel like Dom is actually going to be totally into this movie because of the psychological effect it has on people. And the fact that we, we as a young generation, like, we can relate to this pretty hard with how much we grew up with the internet. And, like I said, the Slenderman era, creepypastas, all that. Um, it, it really did suck coming out of this movie and feeling that way. It's just like... I'm not gonna like. It's not like you know when like I told people like you know because I there are some other film friends I do talk to and they told me they fucking hated this movie because like this isn't their cup of tea as well. Um, but then again, they also did not like stuff like Hereditary and some other like you know horror films like that and Hereditary, Midsummer stuff like that. I mean, I love Midsummer, but like you know those kind of horror films I can get behind. Um, it just sucks that this is one of them that I could get behind. It's just it didn't win me over as much as those other films did. Uh, but I do applaud everybody involved. This, If everything that Dom has said, even I have said positively, has sounded like your cup of tea, check this movie out. Because I commend everything that I have said to the highest degree. It just didn't work for me. But if it sounds like it's going to work for you, by all means, pay for an HBO's Max subscription before it gets ruined by uh, Discovery+. Plus. Check out the rest of the catalog on there. But do check out this movie. <laughs> would you? Would you say lesser than the sum of its parts i guess yeah Would that yeah or is that just me trying to be witty <laughs>